This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on March the 7th, 2016. Enjoy! Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, everyone, I think it's uh, time we started. Now, as for the video last week, that thing messed up, and so there was no video. That's why you didn't get it. Um, so I've, I've double, double checked and triple checked everything today, and it seems to be working. So, okay, let's try that. Now, before we get too much further here, I want to uh, tell you all that uh, there is someone else for tech support besides me. And it is this. I don't know whether you listen close so you can hear it. I'm going to try and turn the sound up. At Ally Bank, no branches equals great rates. It's a fact. Kind of like grandkids equals free tech support. Oh, 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 oh look at you. So great to see you. None of this works. Come on in. <laughs> None of this works. Come on in. Free tech support. There you go. <laughs> so there is someone else besides me for tech support. All right. Um, now, one question here that I wanted to sort of dive into for a second. Um, I'm going to close this and I'm going to do this now. Um, you asked me about a picture that won't open. Yes. Okay. For some reason or other, your computer has forgotten how to open specific files. I don't know why, but it did. But what you can do is you can, once you have the picture on your computer, you can right click on the picture and you will get this menu here. Okay, and in this menu you will see open with. Okay, now uh, this is Windows 10, right? Yes. Windows 10. So if you, if you uh, click on or if you just hover over open with, you will see a list of all of the things that that file can be opened with. Because it's a .jpg, a .jpeg, you can open it with photo gallery, paint, photos, whatever. And um, if there is nothing on your computer that will open it, your computer has been damaged. But um, it should open. Uh, let's try and open it with photos. Okay, and there it is. It opened the picture for me. Okay, the other, uh, I can open it with something else by right click, open with uh, paint. That should open just about anything. And because it's a very large file, you'll see that it's uh, view, let's see, view. So it doesn't have to be the program that created it? No. No, no, it doesn't. Um, so there we go. There's uh, our picture again. You can see it in paint. A JPEG can be opened in paint. Um, now, if you have nothing else um, to open it, uh, but I think you do, because it, I think the computer has just forgotten that photo, uh, photo will open a JPEG. The other thing that you need to do is go to the place where you have the photo in, uh, in your explorer, in your file explorer. Now I have it on the desktop right here. Okay, so I'm going to click on desktop and I'm going to find that file that I'm looking at. It's in here. And there it is, acerlaptop.jpg. Okay. Um, what if you don't see 
this file extension here, if you don't see it, dot jpg dot something, you can right click on the file itself and go to its properties. And then it will give you the full file name, type, JPG, okay, or whatever type it is, whether it's a TIFF or um, um, uh, Photoshop or anything, it will tell you that. And it will tell you that Photo Gallery can open it, okay, and it's opening it by default in Photo Gallery on my machine, okay. Um, and so there you, you find out exactly what you're dealing with. If there is no dot something or other there, yeah. then the file is damaged. It was sent to you without a file extension. And, that, and that's why the computer doesn't understand how to open it. Now you cannot put one on and have the computer open it. You have to get a new file from the sender. Okay. All right. So that's how that works. Um, you'll have to investigate around a little bit to see um, what what you're exactly dealing with there. But that's how to investigate it. Get the properties of the file. Right click, properties. Get its properties, and that will tell you what you're dealing with. Okay. All right. That takes care of that little bit. Now then, um, I think today um, I should go back to and deal with um, how to make documents, text documents, if everybody's amenable to that. Um, Could I ask a question? Yes, sir? you may. Uh, I, I will print and, and I move my margin over and it's there, uh, when I'm typing it, but when I print it, they'll, they'll only do half a line and go to the next line. What, what uh, that's called, uh, that's called um, auto wrap. So what, how can I fix it? Um, what are you using well, to... I, I used WordPad because, okay. because uh, I was trying to uh, yeah. Microsoft Word, but I couldn't get, couldn't get it large enough. Yeah, okay. Well, this, this is one of the things that, this is one of the programs that we, we always look at when we want to make text documents. So let's start with that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, let's start with that. So we'll open up WordPad. Now, you say that you move the margins and you move them with, with these little arrows here. Yeah, I moved it to the end. Yeah, okay. So trying to get uh, the... Uh, to be able to type past uh, 15 and a quarter. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you if you were to move these margins in, okay. Let's let's try that. Let's take the uh, the left margin and move it in. Okay. And so you can see that the cursor started to blink. Yeah within the margin that you moved. Okay, uh, let's do this one. Let's move this one in uh, two units and see what happens when we just put a bunch of text in, coming to, coming to, coming to, and you see it wrapped around. Yeah. Okay, that's what you want it to do. You don't want it to go right to the very edge. So that's where my mistake is. Right? Yeah. Okay, you don't want text to go right to the very edge of paper. Number one, when you go to print that, uh, by default the printer will say, okay, I, wanna, I want three quarters of an inch of margin on the page, and it will mess up the text because it's trying to go to the edge. Okay, so what you need to do is to make sure that these margins are set the way you want them before you start. Now, by default, they should be set properly. Uh, if you've reset them over time and then said save, um, that's the problem. I just moved the one over. Yeah, you need to move them both. Yeah. What makes the second line start in capital? Um, usually that you've, uh, you've finished the line with a period or somewhere in the 
um, in the settings of the program, it's, it's uh, when you hit enter, it's starting a new paragraph. So the start of a new paragraph is always capital letter. Yeah, but this is just a continuation if it wraps around, it starts in yeah. with a capital letter? And then it's, and then it's a little case. I, just, yeah. Just I don't know. That's, uh, all of these programs have quirks. <laughs> little quirky things that will drive you insane. Well, I used to get in Word, Microsoft Word, and then it was acting up. It wouldn't work. Yeah. Yeah, um, and so this is uh, this is a good place to begin with our with our uh, look at um, these programs, and I want to move this back here. I'm just doing this so that I don't get confused about what I'm doing. Okay, so we've put some random text in here. Um, now, there are, before we even start, before we even start, there are some things that you can start text with. Okay, there are some settings you can start text with. And they are, for the most part, here in the ribbon across the top. Uh, in this instance, you, um, the, this box here is called left justify, center justify, right justify, and I forget what this one is. It, it equals the text across um, the um, across the page you're writing and printing. I forget what it is now. Maybe it'll tell me. Anyway. Oh, it's there. Oh, it's just plain old justify. Okay, um, and um, and so. Uh, you can start on the you can start your printing on the left or your your text entry on the left side of the page. You can start it on the right side of the page, which uh, means that um, we'll just do that. Uh, I'm going to take the next one. I'm going to left justify it. Okay, and where to go? See, it's bringing it in from this side of the page. Uh, if you want to put, uh, you're writing a letter and you want to put the date, usually it goes to the top right. Okay, that's a place to do that. Or you want to manually put in a page number, that's a place to do it. Okay. Um, Isn't there a foreign language that reads left to right? There are quite a few. There are quite a few that read that way, but um, you have to have a special keyboard to do that. <laughs> uh, and you have to know what you're doing. <laughs> okay, but yes, you're right uh, that there are plenty of um, languages that need to be printed from right to left. Um, now, okay, so there you are. That That is the right justify. Okay, now, um, the plain old justify, what that's done is it's moved, uh, I've just clicked on it because that's the text I'm using, it has put it back into place and if you measure very, very carefully, you will find that these letters are not lining up with these letters. They're a little bigger, they're a little smaller, maybe only by a few pixels. But what the computer is attempting to do is to make everything in that line even. So that when you get to the end of the line, okay, um, if, that, if that was working properly, what this would do would even everything out to there or it should do. Let me just try it. Let me just see here. I may not have enough in there. No, I don't have enough in there, but if, if you look carefully, it is justifying everything to the center of the page. 
Okay, that's what it does. Um, and if you if you did center if you justified everything, uh, maybe 20, 30 lines if you had it here, you would see everything start to move around. Spaces would become bigger or smaller. Letters would become wider or narrower to make that accommodation to get everything on that line that it can fit properly. Okay, um, and that's called justify. You can bold what you're doing or you can italicize what you're doing, or you can underline what you're doing. You can make the text two times smaller, two times uh, larger. You can change the font's color. You can change the font's type. You can change its size. You can change everything about what you're doing. And if you do it, if, if you want to make something special. Like let's say that you wanted to have a for sale sign for your window. Okay. You can, you can um, change the font color to red. Make it as big as you can and put for sale. And when you print it, you've got a for sale sign. It can do these things. Okay. So there's lots of things that you can do in WordPad and for that matter um, uh, Microsoft Word and, and LibreOffice. They're all just about the same in that regard. Um, I would suggest to you that um, there are only maybe three or four more features in Microsoft Office that you might use plus all of the features that WordPad has. Okay, Some of the features that Microsoft Office might use are that you can start off uh, a document with headings automatically. So you just push a button and say heading one and then push the next button, button heading two and it's smaller text and it's placed in a different place underneath and then uh, plain text and then you can do a heading again in the next paragraph and stuff like that. That's all just pushing buttons. You can do that manually with this. It takes a little more time, but if you know what you're going for, all of these buttons will help you get there. So writing letters, writing lists, all of that stuff is available to you. This is how you make bullet points. These, these, uh, these ones, these icons right here help you make bullet points. And um, the other thing that you can do, of course, is copy and paste stuff. Copy stuff from somewhere else, put it in here and paste it, or paste items from here and put them somewhere else. Okay, so we've done all that and I suggest that you play with it. Make lots of games and play with it. Now. You've got what you want. It's all here. I've done this backwards. And I've done it backwards because I was going too fast and I didn't think about it until it was time to do this next step. Before you started any of this, you should have gone to File, Save As. Even if you save a blank document, you give it a name and a place to put it. Right? File, save as. You give it a name and a place to put it. As well as, um, it's going to ask you what kind of, or what format, file format, you want to save it as. In, um, in, in Windows WordPad, there are two formats you can save it as. You can save it as rich text, and by that I mean if you made the text red, it will save the red text, rich text. If you made uh, a, a very squirrely type of font, some pretty font that you might have, and it's available in WordPad, yes, rich text will allow you to save that. If you just save it, in plain text, all of your formatting 
is stripped out. And you just have a text document, .txt. Okay, all of your formatting is stripped out. You just have the text. You might get a size. I might be able to save the size, but it will just give you a default text format. And that's whatever your computer is using uh, for its default text. Okay. Now, I have a few more on this um, because I have uh, LibreOffice on it. It's going to give me the open document text format ODFT or ODT, uh, but ODT is not readable by other computers that don't have LibreOffice, so you want to save your file if it's in plain text as text.txt. If you've made this in rich text and you send it to somebody, anybody that has a Windows computer has WordPad and it will open it. By default, it'll open it. Can you do your own drawings, make a drawing and put it in? The yes, you can. In WordPad, you can. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and if you find something, uh, let's try this. I'm going to get out of this for a second. Uh, let's try this just for giggles. I'm going to take this um, picture that I have here, and I'm going to try and insert it in this. I think I can. So I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to go to my document. I'm going to right click. And if it's available to be pasted in this format, paste will, will light up. Okay. If it's not available to be pasted in this format, paste will not light up. So let's try that. And there we go. I've pasted a picture in my rich text Word document. Yeah, but I mean, can I draw a flower? You would do that in paint. Yeah. Okay. And then you would uh, see it says uh, a paint drawing. Yeah. Okay. So you would make your flower in paint. Yeah. Save it as a BMP, a, a bitmap, or a JPEG, whichever. And then you would import it into your document. Oh. Okay. That's a good way to do it. Um, now, the other thing that you can do um, is what's called insert an object. Now, inserting an object. An object can be a file. It can be a file. Let's say, for instance, it's uh, an Excel spreadsheet. You've made an Excel spreadsheet. You don't want to send the person the spreadsheet. You just want to send them a piece of it. Okay. So you can open your spreadsheet. You can highlight whatever it is you want out of that spreadsheet. You can save it as an object. And then you can go back here. And you can say, insert the object I just made. And it will insert that piece. That piece of the spreadsheet that you are calling an object. That's really cool. It's probably beyond you, <laughs> but you can do it. You have to tell it to save an object uh, as opposed to just save it? Like yes, you would, you, you would be inserting an object, so you've saved the object. Now you click on insert object. I guess what I'm saying is how do you save the object? Like what's the well, you would do that in the spreadsheet. Okay. All right. So it's saying, well, okay. Uh, yes. All right. Uh, let's. You can. You can insert um, an Acrobat uh, PDF, an Acrobat document. You can ins insert a, a piece of PowerPoint that has a macro in it. In other words, a piece of that PowerPoint that that uh, plays a little um, movie file in it. That's a macro. Uh, you can insert all kinds of things. It's going. It's able to go looking for them. There's all right. Excel yeah, there, uh, a, a, an Excel macro, a worksheet, uh, a, a chart or a graph. From that is can be an object, and so it can be inserted 
in a WordPad document. All right? Um, it's, it is a little bit more powerful than things used to be. Now, um, there is, when you make documents in either the text format or the rich text format, if you make uh, a document in a text editor, in the text editor, in Notepad, there, um, there is in Notepad a restriction on how big you can make the Notepad with text. Okay, I've forgotten what it is. I think it's 65K, but I'm not sure. 65K in text is quite a bit. 65,000 bits is quite a bit. Uh, it's probably three or four pages of just plain text. But there's a restriction. You can't go beyond that. If you try to, try to save something beyond that, it won't save. It's, it'll tell you it's too big. Um, but there is no restriction in WordPad on how big you can make the file to save text. It can be ginormous. You can write a book. Okay? And some people have. Some people have set up their, their WordPad to open um, it in a very particular way where um, they have a very particular kind uh, uh, and size of font and it's set up in a very particular way uh, with margins and they've saved that setup and then when they open up that setup it opens exactly that way and they can just start typing and they're they're typing their book. Okay. You brought that picture over, has it copied your words? No, it hasn't. Um, but it might. It might. You might have to resize it, and you can resize it. Let me just get this a little bit bigger. You can resize these things by, by um, clicking on the picture itself, and you'll see that your cursor turned into a four-way cursor. Okay, So you can take and go to the corner here, and you'll see it... it went to a two-way cursor, so you hold down the left mouse button and you can resize. Make it so that it does fit. If you've got a really large picture, it might take over the whole document. You'll have to resize. You can do that. It's really easy. As long as you can find an edge. So that's how that is done. Um, and as I said before, there are um, all of the things that you need to format a document are here in the WordPad document maker. Okay, um, it's it's a powerful little program um, that you can do a very very many 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 things with, um, and every Windows um, machine has WordPad. And so if you send someone a rich text format document, they can open it. You can be as strange with it as you want. They can open it and see exactly what you made. Okay, that's WordPad. Do I want to save this? Don't save. Okay, let's go quickly to LibreOffice. And when we open LibreOffice, um, we have the option to create a lot of different kinds of documents, but let's just go with the writer document because that's what we're looking at is how to make a, a document that just about everything will be able to understand it. Uh, I'm going to make this bigger on the screen so you can see what's going on here. Now, here again, you've got your margins. Okay, and I'm going to move a margin here just to see what happens to the crop. 
And you'll see that the cursor moved with the movement of the margin, but the crop did not. Okay, the crop did not. It, the crop is, is really saying there's an override. There's an override to the margin. Okay, you can make this look however you want inside this margin, but I am not going to allow you to override that margin with anything you might want to insert in there, whether it's a picture, another document, whatever. I'm not going to allow you to override that because this document needs that crop mark to say how it will be printed. Okay? So you, you can't go past these overrides. You can see that it pretty much has the same things that WordPad had. Um, just a little bit different style of the ribbon, but it's all there. There's your justifies there. There's your, your bullet makers there to make your bullet points. You put in a point, hit enter. It, um, it starts with number one, hit enter after you've made your point. It goes down and makes number two. Make your point, enter, makes number three, a bullet point. Okay, um, you can do all different kinds of things uh, with filling in backgrounds. Um, you can't particularly draw on, um, on the page you're working on, but here again, you can make a paint drawing and insert it. Um, you should be able to do something, you should be able to, now wait, I'll wait till I get to how you save a document here to go to, to do that. Um, but all of the other things that you need to do to a document are here in LibreOffice. Um, remember I said last week that um, if you have a full-on copy of Microsoft Office, you will only use 10% of what's available to you. At a maximum, you've got to be a power user to use 10% of what's available. In most cases, you'll only use 2 or 3%. That's why LibreOffice is sort of slimmed down for the average user. There's not a lot of extras in it. You don't need them. You don't need them. Um, and that's what makes it so handy to use. Now, I am going to put in some random text here. Cool. And now we want to figure out, and I should have done this first, save the document first. So you have a name for it and you have a place to put it. Um, if you don't want me to save it, do you, can you just eliminate that step? Um, if something should happen to all of the work that you've done over the, over the last three hours and you have not saved it, the, the computer will do what's called an auto-save. Every 10 minutes that you're working, it will save what you did. It'll be hard to find it, but it will save it. Okay? So that all is not lost after three hours of working and your computer crashes and you haven't done a save, you're toast. Okay? But with the auto-save feature, it'll save it every 10 minutes, every 5 minutes, or whatever. Okay. Excuse me, can you not recapture that when you go back to save it to the file that was saved? Um, you, to have it do an autosave, you have to uh, have named the document and told it where to put the document. Then it can do an autosave. If you haven't done any of that, if you have not saved it till you're finished, if for any reason that computer messes up, you've lost all your work. It's, that's why, I, you know, I, I, it's, this is not a question of do as I do, it's do as I say. <laughs> and I say, when the first thing you do when you open a document is give it a name and a place to save. So that autosave will start working. Okay, uh, so now what, what we can do in um, LibreOffice as we can export whatever we've done 
to a PDF, portable document format. Every computer on the planet has a way to read a PDF, whether it's a PDF reader from Adobe or something that's a third party written PDF, every computer on the planet should be able to read a PDF. And the great thing about a PDF is once you've made it, the user on the other end cannot change it unless they have software to do that, which is very expensive. Um, that's a way to ensure that when you send someone a document, what they get is unchanged to the point where they're going to print it. Okay, and that has important implications like a fax. If you send someone a PDF, it is the same thing as sending a fax because the fax cannot be changed en route and it can't be changed as it's being uh, replicated on the fax machine. It can only be changed after it's taken off the fax machine and someone affixes their signature and they fax it back. It's the same thing with PDF. PDF is the modern version of fax. Okay? And so you can export any document you make in here as a PDF. That's a good thing if you're making something that's, you know, you need someone to sign and send back to you. That's a good thing to do. Um, beyond that, all of the, the ways that you can save something are available to you in the Save As. And can you just put in PDF in, in, in the file name? Um, no, you have to tell it with, with in, in uh, LibreOffice anyway. But you have this little button right here. Um, probably not. <laughs> Next week. Next week, I am going to bring in a computer that I have redone with Linux. And I'm going to show it to you. And I think that perhaps the way you need to go is to go with Linux. Um, I will show you how it works, what you can do with it, and the fact that it's a modern, safe operating system. It's modern and safe. It's not a 10? It's no, it's not Windows 10. You don't have to buy a new computer to, to do Windows 10. You could probably put a Linux on your old computer and have a safe computer, a computer that's going to be able to be updated um, and something that you may want to uh, a program process that you may want to use. I will show it to you okay. and then you can look at it and say all right maybe I can go with this because it's as simple to use as Windows. It has all of these great programs already in it. And it would be replacing XP? Yes, it's, this is a replacement for Windows XP. An old operating system that you cannot get support for anymore. If your computer was to die, I cannot replace, put Windows XP back on it again because one, I can't get the driver, um, the driver programs to make all of your hardware work properly. They're just not available. Um, in Linux, that's not the case. All of these driver programs are there in a format that can make the computer work properly, even old iron like yours. Okay, so we can talk about that. I'll show you how it works, and then from there you can look at it. Okay, that's that's my little Linux is free. Oh, it's free. Yeah. Free. Yeah. Therefore, the low low price of free. All right. The only problem with it is, it takes a guy like me to set it up for you. Once it is set up, I recommend that you don't fiddle with it. Just do what you want to do because everything that I set up is there. You don't have to have anything else. Don't fiddle with it and you'll be fine. If you start fiddling with it, you can mess it up and I have to come back and unmess it. Okay, 
So, but we can, we can look at that next week. So that's my little walk down the Linux lane. We'll get to that next week. All right, where was I? Saving stuff. Yeah, because I asked about the PFD. Yeah, okay. So um, there we do, a file, save as. We'll go to save as. Okay, and it's, it's now going to give you save as type, okay? And because um, I have set this computer, um, I haven't set this program up to default save as a Microsoft document, it wanted to save as an ODT, an open text document format, okay? Um, I can... With, by using this little down arrow, go to uh, a, a Microsoft Word 2007-2013 XML dot docx, which is the modern version of the Microsoft Office format. But there's no point in doing that because not everyone has the most modern versions of Microsoft Office. Mm -hmm. So all a lot of the formatting that is done in this XML format would be lost. So you want to save it as a dot doc right here. Microsoft Word 97 2003. That will save everything that you've done. Everything. Okay? except for those really weird macros, which you will have no truck with at all. You're not going to use them, so why would you play with it? Okay? So, a dot, save as a dot .doc. All right? Everything will open a dot .doc. Um, you can save it as a rich text format file if you'd like, or a just plain old text document. Okay? All of these are available to you in LibreOffice. So let's get out of that. Cancel out of that. And we'll cancel out of, or we'll close down LibreOffice. Do I want to save it? Don't save. Now, just for the sake of argument, uh, I want to go back to Notepad. Um, Now, why is that so big? James has been fiddling with this. <laughs> Format font. Oh, yeah. He's been fiddling with it. <laughs> so let's go back to 12. Um, I was using 14 because I wanted to Okay, let's see. Yeah, let's look at it 14. Okay, so there, there's the cursor back to normal size instead of being from here to here. James was fiddling with it. Um, <coughs> Notepad can um, be really, really handy for doing quick notes to yourself and sending them off to someone else because um, Notepad can be read by any computer on the planet. If it's just a quick... Uh, note to yourself or a quick note to someone else uh, about remind your reminder for you can you when you go to save a notepad you can save you can save it as a reminder by just saying the name remind to get the milk okay reminder to pick up hubby <laughs> Well, you would send it as an email. Um, you can send it. Um, now, let's not go. Let's not get into other applications like Skype and stuff like that. But you can send uh, text documents through Skype. Um, so you 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 would uh, save this as reminder to pick me up at, and then you would put in big bold letters here. The mall, 130. Okay, 
Then you send it off to hubby. He gets it in an email, opens it up, and there's the, in the title, reminder to pick me up and at the mall, 130. If he gets that wrong, <laughs> if he gets that wrong, then you have every right to go off on him. <laughs> yeah, I've been through that one too. Got on the wrong side of the mall, I got into the wrong mall. So there you go. Um, Notepad is great for stuff like that. Now, um, I cannot remember, if anybody can remember, uh, was it last year, early in the year, that um, Dale Carey had a little trick that you could do in Notepad? You taught that. Yeah. I, I, for the life of me, I cannot remember how it was done. I'd have to go and look it up. Yeah, it has to be log dot. That was it. Log dot. About capitals. It's yeah, and then you save the doc. Then you save the document. It saves it or well, what it does is it it timestamps it. Every time you open the document and put something new in it, it timestamps it with a date and time. Okay, so it was cap in in caps. You begin the document with log dot in caps. Then you save the document as a name, okay? So you might want to uh, save it uh, as um, your, your, uh, your daily sugar test, okay? So you would save it as daily sugar test. When you open it up tomorrow and you put in your numbers, when you close it, it will timestamp the document when you put it in, okay? This is very, very helpful. Okay, you can do that with all with all kinds of things that you can think of. Um, making a document with a timestamp every time you use it, for lists, for uh, like I said, for tracking things. Tracking that's what it's for. It's for tracking things like your sugar test, like your mileage on your car, uh, like when was the last time you changed the oil, stuff like that. Okay, very very useful in Notepad. Capital letters, log dot, then save the document with a name. Okay? Um, any other questions? We've got about uh, 10 minutes here. Yeah, in Notepad. It's only good in Notepad. That only works in Notepad. Exactly. But every computer has Notepad. Now, on your Mac, I don't think it works in a text writer, <laughs> it only works in Notepad. I use stickies to send myself yeah. reminders. Yeah, stickies on your Mac is great, but, yeah. but, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't miss this. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Somebody sent me some photos, email, and they're that big, I've forgotten how to make things smaller in, through email. So oh, you want to resize them? Yeah, so oh. I can see them instead of a blurred corner of it. Okay, um, let's, um, I've got this picture right here, so I'm going to open it in, um, in paint, and this is what you get, right? Yeah. You get the picture, you get only a piece, of, you, you've got to move around it so big, okay? What you can do is you can open the picture in paint, how will I do that? It's only an email. Somebody sent it. No, you have to save it to your desktop. Okay? So you want to save it to the desktop. Okay? Once you've done that, you can manipulate it with paint. And so it's really, really simple in paint to click on resize. Okay? And then you can either resize it by a percentage or by the number of pixels. Um, the most important thing in resize is called maintain aspect ratio. So if the picture was 16 by 9 and you resize the horizontal by 50 percent, 
it will resize the vertical automatically by that same amount. So you're maintaining the aspect ratio so things don't get all wonky. If you don't maintain the aspect ratio, they get all wonky when you do this. But that's how you would do it, is resize in paint. Then once you've got it to the size you think you might like to have, usually I like to take it down by two thirds. So resize. Um, and I have to do this every time because I get a lot of pictures. Yeah, if you want to set, if, if you want to just simply forward those pictures from that email, not a problem. It's somebody else's problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you know, it's, if you want to forward them on, um, no, you can. Want to look at them. Yeah. Well, then, then saving them to your desktop, and op and just simply open them in Paint too. Uh, let me just close this out. And I'll see you, you, if you click on view in paint, if you click on view, and then click on full screen, it's resized the picture to your computer screen. Okay? You can do that. In, um, in your email, you're on Gmail, Hotmail? Hotmail. I, if you if you double click on the picture, does it not open up in a new window? Yeah. If you double click on the picture, it should open up in a new window. Okay. And if that picture is too big, then you can resize the view. Okay. Change the view. Okay, so if it's way big, big, then if you view, uh, view it by 50%, should bring it down to inside the window. Okay, double click on it and see if it opens in a new window. That may, that may be your answer. So you can do these things if you want to send the picture on uh, in, a, in a size that's handleable by someone else. Yes, you're going to resize in paint. You can send the problem off to somebody else just simply by forwarding. <laughs> that would be the ideal. Here, you deal with it. I've seen what's going on. Yes, I think that's why I get them like that. Yes. Um, I'm confused about um, setting up a new uh, email account. You told us some time ago that when Rogers takes over the 1st of April that we probably would all have to have new email addresses. What I'm confused about is things such as, like, I don't know what a local email account is, and at one point you told us if you initialize an email account on one browser, it might not be able to access it on another browser. Yep. Like, where do you suggest to go? Like, I have Gmail and I hate and stuff like that. Like, I just still have not trouble you with Microsoft. So, hey, Bob, but, I heard that uh, talking to the girl from Source the other day, and she said it'll probably be another year before. Oh, that's well, okay, that's yeah. great. That's Let's not worry about it until then. And you know what? They may, uh, if it's going to be that long, Fred, if it's going to be that long, they might just turn around and say, okay, this is just too much damn trouble for another three years on a contract that we might lose. Just leave the damn thing. Just leave the servers go. Thank you. That's awesome. That they may do that. Okay. Uh, I mean, the what you're looking at here is how many people are in the village? Um, 560 units. 560 units. Um, they would have to be ready to do 560 um, um, services. Or, or service calls, not necessarily to your house, but ser uh, service telephone calls over probably the course of a couple of weeks from people calling back and back and back. How do you do this again? <laughs> How do you do this again? Is that going to affect Hotmail then? No, no, no. just uh, your Rogers. Now, um, there were other places in the city a couple of years ago that Rogers took over uh, from another service 
and they made everybody change to a Rogers email account from that service. But what they did was they made it relatively easy. Uh, they allowed, they, they, they just simply moved the email account to the web. So it was Rogers dot, uh, it was at Rogers dot Yahoo. Okay, so they, they opened an account in Yahoo Mail, and that's where you went to get it. There was a Rogers email account on Yahoo. Would they do that again? That in itself had its problems, but that was the easiest solution for them at the time. I don't think they'll ever do it again. So that doesn't stay as the local land. No, that's, that yeah. becomes on yeah. the web, yeah. okay. Which is not a bad idea if you've got, if you're a traveler and, and you're able to get on your internet connections yeah. during the day or at night when you finish traveling, whatever. Yes? Uh, going back to this picture thing, uh, I get the odd email from my daughter who sends me pictures of whatever, me or herself, but they either come in upside down or sideways. <laughs> Here again, paint can help you out. Okay, because, all right, let's, uh, I'm just going to open this in paint one more time here, and I will show you. <coughs> open with, open with paint, okay, and there is a button in paint called rotate. Okay? Aha! Uh -huh. Rotate. So the picture will open in paint in the aspect that, that she sent it to you. If it's off, if it's rotated 90 degrees to the right, that's how paint will open it. You can rotate it 90 degrees to the left and save. And then it is saved locally to your computer, not in email, but you've saved it to your computer. Okay, which is what, okay, um, so you have that button right there, rotate, okay, and most other, um, most other uh, paint type programs do have this rotate button where you can move uh, by 90 degrees, 180 degrees, however, um, because lots of times people will take a picture in the 16 by 9 aspect ratio and they'll send it, um, by the 9 by 16 aspect ratio. In other words, it'll be that that tall instead of that tall. Okay, so that's when you have to rotate the picture. Okay, that... Bob? Yes? How much trouble can you get into as, as a novice if you sign on to your computer as an administrator? Well, you have to be able to uh, to have administrative control over your computer no matter what. Um, the thing to do is, is, James and I went through this last year, I think, with you, uh, is to um, have two accounts, if you're just a single user on your computer, have two accounts, one as administrator and the other as just standard user. Because if you log into your standard user account and you go to a website that downloads something in the background and wants to wants to install it, it can't do it as a standard user. It will pop up and say, uh, you want to make a change to the computer? Enter your password, your administrator password. Well, if you didn't do anything and the computer's demanding an administrator password, at that point you say no, okay, and nothing will happen. But if you're logged in as an administrator, and something downloads in the background and wants to load, well, you're already admin. It's not going to ask you for a password. It's just going to load. So that's the reason to do it, to have your, your standard user account as a standard account. You, go, you can go into your computer, uh, into... The, uh, into the user accounts and you can make a standard account. Essentially you're making a brand new account on your computer and so you can start fresh if you want to. Okay? You, um, if it's a new account, if it's a new standard account, you have to set up email and everything for it. Okay? That's if you want local email. If you want to go to the web for email, that's fine. You just you know log into Gmail or Yahoo or whatever and you're fine, or even to, uh, even to, to uh, source cable, you're fine. Mm -hmm. 
But that's a, that's one way to do it. Yes. Can you remind me because I didn't get the video last week? Download the pictures onto the computer, put the CD in, then what? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't write anything down, and the video didn't turn up. So. Okay, I'm going to do this one last time for Brenda. <laughs> okay, if I had put a CD into the CD player, into the computer, and I open up this PC or my PC or whatever, okay, um, I would be able to open the DVD RW drive by clicking on it. Okay. It would open. Once it has figured out there's a, a blank CD in there, it would open it. Okay. At that point, all I have to do is take these pictures, like this picture here, grab it with my mouse, hold down the left click, grab it with my mouse, and move it over to the CD drive I just opened. Okay, because it's going to open as a blank something or other. You just drag the pictures in there, and then across the top, you will see the word burn. You click on burn, and it burns the pictures to CD. Isn't that window over the top of the pictures? No. Now, just for the sake of argument, just for the sake of argument, mm -hmm. I am going to open... I've opened a blank page, and we are going to call this your CD drive. If you, if you put a CD in, and you click on the CD drive, it will open as a blank window, like that. Yeah. At that point, all you have to do is grab a hold of the pictures you want, and just drag them into that blank window. Yeah, but that window there, the white blank, is covering your pictures. Well, you can make it, you can make it smaller by going up, up, up here uh, to the minimize maximize button okay and make this a size that you can deal with or you can grab an edge and make it a size you can deal with okay, oh, okay. all right um, and then you just simply drag these items into that blank window and if you look carefully around your ribbon uh, for the CD drive only you will see the a button called burn Click that button, it burns, you're done. Does that work for music files too? Or? No. Um, what it will work for is data. Okay, so if you have an MP3, it will work for that. It's just saving the MP3 to a CD. It's not making a CD music disc because a CD music disc is a very specific kind of data disc. It's just saving the data to disc. So you can save a document, you can save a picture, you can save an MP3. Um, you, you can mix them all up and you can put them on that disc. It's just data. If you want to make a music CD, then you have to have CD burning software, a shampoo will make a music CD out of your music. When I've burnt this disc, can I take it to somebody else's place and show them it'll play Yes, on yes, yeah, yeah. That's all I want. <laughs> That's the way it should work. Okay, I think we've uh, pretty much beat this up. Thank you so much. This time I, I do have, this time I, 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 I do have video. I can see it now. It's there. And so I will try my best to get it off to you tomorrow. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.